So today we're going to look at using the IMC user access management module. Um, this is an at cost uh, module that you can add in the IMC base platform if you f so choose. Um, and we're going to use that to do centralized device authentication with a Cisco router. Obviously this will work with all your HP products and pretty much anything that supports uh, the RADIUS standards, which will give you centralized authentication and more importantly centralized logging so you'll know who logged in. So first thing I'm going to do is set up your Cisco router. So in this case, uh, we're just going to let Google do its magic and and uh, do the Google technician thing. So no use figuring this out yourself when you can just Google it, right? Nobody needs to know anything anymore. Um, so funny enough, let's uh, let's go to the Scott Lowe of the VMware series, VMware books fame. Scott Lowe does, in fact, apparently know everything. Um, in this case, the example here, you can see uh, 1645 and uh, 1646, those are radius ports. Um, the IMC default ports are actually going to be 1812 and 1813, so both of those are the radius RFC compliant. Uh, so just make sure your uh, port numbers match. Next thing we're going to do is set up the IMC for user authentication. So where all the modules get added is over here in the services tab. So we're going to go to the UAM home. And once we get there, we're going to see we've got a nice little uh, authentication configuration wizard. So UAM is much more than just centralized device authentication. It's actually a full-blown RADIUS server that will allow you to do .1x MAC authentication. And really, um, it's the base of additional modules like the Endpoint Active Defense EAD uh, that will really allow you to do posture checking and those kind of things if you feel the need for that in your uh, in your business. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go in and create the access devices. So in um, you might be familiar with this as a radius client. So I've got quite a few already in here, 3560s, a couple of Cisco routers, some HP switches. Um, so let's take a look here at the Cisco 2811. Um, you can see the access device type is Cisco General, um, radius accounting fully supported, and we can actually go in. This is one I've already, like I said, set up and we can see what I the settings are. In this case, authentication port 1812, accounting port 1813. Again, those have to match with what you configure on the device. Um, that's a pretty much about it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to Users and User Access User View, and we're going to go down to Device Management Users. So an Access User is really just a .1x user. Um, a device management user, on the other hand, would be used for things like Telnet and SSH to log into the device. So they are two different kinds of users. So going into the device management user, and again, I've already got one set up here for us. Uh, if you wanted to add one yourself, you could click Add. Um, best practice really is in most organizations is to have a single user account per operator so you can go back and you can see who did what and when so gives the ability to have a centralized fashion and, and gives you auditability and accountability at the end hopefully if people aren't sharing passwords uh, the other nice thing here is you can actually um, limit the amount of IP addresses and limit where that particular administrator can come in from so now that we have uh, successfully created our, our administrator in this case um, modified it. Let's go and see how this actually works. So we're going to go over to a terminal here and I'm going to telnet to the IP address of this router and type in my uh, admin account with the password and look at that. I'm in a Cisco 2811. Enable. There we go. We'll do a show run. Uh, let's pop through this a little bit. Um, see if there's anything interesting here. In this case we can see the uh, there's a couple of the uh, AAA authentication, the AAA new model um, that was uh, in the Scott Lowe blog and again Cisco documentation is great for that as well um, however you choose to find that. So let's go and quit out of here. There we go. Let's shut this down. So the other important thing is to be able to go back and, and have some accountability, have some auditability. So built into this is also a log files, device management user. So I can go in here and see um, who's been doing what and look for failures. Maybe uh, there might have been a brute force attack that you might 
want to look at. Um, in this case, we can see somebody with the uh, username of root was trying to log into my switch, which just didn't work. And for the one we just created here, this admin account, again, we'll be able to go into here, go to the details, and look. And there we are. We can see the device IP is 10.101.0.1, and I did, in fact, log in successfully. So that's it, guys. See you next time on the next IMC Management Tutorial.